A few years ago, I used to broadcast my national radio show, The Drive with Alan Taylor, from a cool car collection in Los Angeles at Galpin Auto Sports. Now, my friend is the CEO. His name is Bo Bachman, and he's got a new TV show coming out on Discovery. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, we asked him to give us a tour of the world's largest Ed Big Daddy Roth automotive collection. I don't know whether or not you've ever heard of Galpin Autosport or Galpin Ford, the world's largest by volume Ford dealer, but Bo here is the, one of the family members of Galpin Ford and Galpin Autosport where we're standing right now. Behind us is one of his cars from his collection. And you collect some weird stuff, my friend. Uh, that I do, yes. Uh, we'll have a few weird things to show you today. What, what do we have here? It's a CVCC. I mean, it's, it's just an old Honda. This was actually Big Daddy Ross' car. Yeah. Uh, his personal transportation, he worked at Knott's Berry Farm. Ed Big Daddy Roth, you know, Rat Fink. I'm a pioneer of customizing and, uh, you know, just all around uh, weird car builder. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he used to paint on this and when he was painting signs, he'd put his cans up there and he'd have other artists that would come along and, and you know, Von Dutch pinstripe it and a lot of cool history with it. No doubt. But no when doubt. I got this, people, I, I thought for sure people would think I was nuts because, uh, you know, it's an old Honda. but. To me, it's got a lot of Yeah, but history. I remember watching Von Dutch's toolbox sell for 300 and some thousand dollars. 300 yeah. and some odd thousand dollars for Von Dutch's pinstriping toolbox, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, these cars are definitely collectible, and thank God nobody actually sanded it down and, exactly. or anything. Well, we've it, got some of Von Dutch's things as well. well. They Big have fan the of his. world's <laughs> largest. I mean, right next to us, and we're going to show you right now the world's largest uh, Ed Big Daddy Roth collection. Walk us through some of this stuff. Well, we have a few of his trikes. This was actually the last trike that he actually. Uh, built called Globehopper, and his idea was he wanted to drive to the, to the Soviet Union, uh, but he made it as far as Alaska and figured uh, that might be a one-way trip. So yeah. uh, he went all the way up there and drove it back uh, by himself with uh, a, a rat fink uh, mask uh, next to him. <laughs> but uh, just a crazy trip all the way up to the glaciers. Yeah, a couple other of his trikes, uh, secret weapon from his old army days, uh, and the great speckled bird, which actually that whole tube in front is a water tank, so he'd missed himself when he was driving through the desert. Another guy, <laughs> other motorcycle guys would get behind him and get a little bit, but yeah, kind of, kind of a cool thing though. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this guy obviously uh, made some interesting machines throughout his life. Well, he was a, a pioneer yeah. and, a, and, and a true visionary. Rotar, what we see here, actually was a real working flying car. Really? And probably the, the first, I would say, uh, of its day. And, and it would levitate. That's it was two Triumph engines on its side that would make the blades spin, and it would actually levitate off the ground. At the time, George Barris was trying to build a flying car, so they were kind of in oh, well, this competition. The, but this one actually did fly. Really flew. It also changed all the rules at hot rod shows, because at Autorama in 1962, uh, uh, I think it was Dirty Doug revved it a little bit too much. A blade came off, hit the ceiling, and injured five people. Wow. So after that time, you were no longer allowed to rev up your, your hot rods at the show. <laughs> oh, so, look at that. This so, is a special collection. Yeah, so a 27 uh, Ford named Tweety Pie. What's really cool about uh, this particular car, built it right around the same area, 1962 to 63, and there were over 9 million model kits made of that car wow. that uh, the kids would build back in the day. So we've got a few of those in the collection as well. Awesome, and then comes to this bubble. I don't even yeah. know how you get in this, this thing with this bubble uh, top. Very carefully, it all motorizes out, but this is Mysterion. Uh, what I consider probably the weirdest car of all time. Uh, you know, twin engine, uh, you, know, you know, light off to one side, and uh, you know, you had the twin Ford V8s in there, and just absolutely wild. Now, this was the only Roth car that was completely destroyed. Uh, so our hot rod builder here at Gas Dave Shutton, he actually built that car from scratch in his garage, wow. and it's a perfect model of Mysterion in every way. Did they make everywhere. also models of these cars? Absolutely. Okay. Hot Wheels, mm. um, you know, all kinds of uh, all kinds of cool stuff in the day. Another one that has a bubble top, kind of interesting, and I think is one of your favorites too. Well, this is a, this was uh, yeah, for me a dream come true project because I, I, we got to play a little bit of part of, uh, in history. Uh, this is Orbitron. Uh, Orbitron was built in 1964 and uh, it had some really cool features. Again, asymmetrical. In other words, it has the red, uh, green, and blue light, and that was to emulate the new technology of the day called color television. And the idea was oh. that that light three shown together would be one white light. Right. And it actually does work. Huh. But what was really cool is it actually disappeared in the early 1970s. Guys have been looking for it for 35 years, and it was found 
uh, three years ago being used as a dumpster in Juarez, Mexico, in one of the worst barrios in existence today. Probably one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in North America. So the bubble was gone and they were just filling it full of trash. It, it literally was that. The, the nose was completely torn off, so it didn't quite look the same. But what was amazing, what was still there, the engine, the carburetors, the steering wheel. Unbelievable. Uh, there was one of everything left so we could perfectly replicate uh, and restore the entire vehicle. And that's one of the original wheels right there. Original it. wheels and the original tire. Now they, they made very few sets of these tires, so we actually molded that and, and was able to come up with a reproduction tire for it. Unbelievable. What was, uh, for me, another big honor, we got a lot of the original team that worked on the car back together. So it was a, a real honor to be a part of this uh, historic automobile being brought back to life. And well, it's one of my all-time favorites. And the interesting thing about Galpin Motors is that Galpin was the original car customizer for the OEM. Uh, and you know, our, our customizing goes back to 1953. There you and, go. And uh, you know, we're, we're just having more fun today than ever. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful machines. I bought my Shelby here at Galpin Auto Sports and Thank Galpin you. Motors. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the last about five cars yeah. for you guys, but still doing exactly what us car guys do, customizing cars. And I know, I want you guys to know there's a big collection behind you. So next time, we'll show you the rest of the collection. Yeah, yeah. That's another cool thing. To yes, say. you do. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for hanging with us, man. You won't want to miss it as Discovery Channel goes full throttle with my friend Bo Bachman with his new TV series, Driven. You can watch it now on Discovery Go.